something happened recently in our own backyard, not literally, but in Texas. <laughs> I whacked myself in the face. Okay. Hi, it's Drix Mattel, and we are back. Listen, let's just not act like we're about to not do what we're about here to do. Our own backyard. Let's not act like we are not about to do what we're about to do on this channel right now in this gig. So, I was I was filming a television program in London when this video came out, and I didn't have my cameras, I didn't have anything, so I couldn't instantly respond. So I've had to wait like probably five weeks, four weeks to see this, and I'm here at my show backstage in Winnipeg and I just got ready early because I thought we could just rip into it now about mm, two years ago Probably like mid COVID I reviewed the girl defined wearing makeup in a God honoring way video and, and it ended up being very um I guess clickable on the internet. So let's see what these gals are talking about today So these gals I I don't know their names. I think it's like it's got to be like it's truly got to be Ashley and Ashley or something like that. Let me put in my AirPods. Rich. So today we're gonna jump right into the new Girl Defined video. It is called, Dry Queens are a mockery of God's design for womanhood. <laughs> and we are about to learn, we're about to learn about ourselves. We're about to look inward, we're about to look outward. And before I push play here, please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell because we have new videos every single week. And let me just say this, you know, I'm very accepting of everyone. I love all people of all religions. Or by drag queen standards, I accurately hate everyone the same amount. So I'm just saying I'm going into this with an open mind and I would actually love to watch this and then walk away being like, wow, we're not so different. But I have a feeling that I'm gonna feel very conflicted about some of the ideas presented by Ashley and Ashley. Okay, wait, I'm gonna read the description, the video description. Why is it that full grown males dressing up as overdeveloped, highly sexualized females are suddenly rising in popularity? Why are families now taking their little children to drag queen nightclub parties? <laughs> Hi guys, would you like to go with me to the drag queen nightclub party? This is written by somebody who's never left the home. Where they're encouraged to tip half-dressed drag dancers? We're gonna call it, I already know from the description, this is somebody who's never been to a drag show. And I'm gonna say that like 99% of drag is completely innocuous. There's maybe the 1% of fake blood or political statements or, you know, but most of it's, tr I mean, if we're being honest, it's like Broadway twinks lip syncing to Mother Knows Best from Tangled. Like that, that's what's at stake here. What in the world is happening? Have we gone completely off the rails? Oh, rails is spelled incorrectly. As a society, when it comes to any sense of morality and male female norms, well, first of all, I don't think Norm is a great name. How do we navigate this radical new world and stay true to God's design? Let's unpack this together. For a deeper dive, listen to episode number 91 on the Girl Defined Show podcast. I think that means there's 90 other episodes. Jesus. All right. But you know what? We're going to go into this. We're going to be supportive and open-minded. I got my headphone in. We have the girls here. They actually look beautiful. And we'll just, we'll just see what happens. We'll see what happens. I'm having an open mind. You gotta remember, I'm from a small town in the Midwest, so I'm used to having to extend an olive branch with people who I don't agree with, and, and I, I can do that. We are not gonna give into the delusion. This is not gonna help all of the major mental breakdowns major that are going on in our world and suicide. Like, this is not helping it by affirming that one, men can be women, or two, men Ooh, should dress I'm up like- I'm already taking it back. I'm already taking it back. I'm already taking it back. The nerve of people who are like fundamentalist Christians to say that drag is causing suicide. Excuse me? I'm I can't. I'm not even going to go there. Women, That's like obvious. And put on fake breasts that are way oversized. Massive. Fake breasts that are way oversized? These are a C cup. These are my meet grade breasts. My oversized ones are still on the bus. What's up, All everybody? Right. It is Kristen and Bethany here. Kristen and Bethany. I almost knew that. Kristen and Bethany. Chris, hi, Kristen and Bethany. So glad you're joining us for this conversation because... We need to talk about this. This is something we've been wanting to talk about for a while. Drag queens. And yeah. the fact that it has become so mainstream, it is so popular. It is something it, that we're told children should be exposed to. It will give them sexual diversity, opportunity. You know, their young minds are so moldable and we want to shape them in the right way. In fact, something happened recently in our own backyard. Not literally, but in Texas. Oh. <laughs> I whacked myself in the face. 
Okay. Um, this was in the news a lot, so you probably heard about it, but there was a big drag oh, show. Oh, okay. In- so this appears to be a response kind of based on what they saw in the news. Do you guys remember like a few months ago, it was like, drag queens doing drag shows for kids. God damn it. Drag the kids to pride, a family-friendly drag show. That's how it was advertised. And in fact, when I saw some articles and some videos about this event, yeah. there was a huge neon sign in the background that literally said, it's not going to lick itself. We don't need to give you any more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I love that she just said, and the neon sign said, it's not going to lick itself. And the other girl went, you know, before we rip into this, I want to say this, and I've never taken a formal position on this, but I'm just going to say, to say that all drag is appropriate for children is wrong. To say that all drag is inappropriate for children is wrong. When I worked at Hamburger Mary's, let's say, we had the early seating where it was like no swear words. We were encouraged to do more like Disney numbers. That's when we bust out like the Barbie girl or like the Hocus Pocus number. There is that type of drag show. And then there is like, you know, 1 a.m. nightclub drag queens stapling things to themselves drag show. So every drag show is different. Every drag performer is different. I mean, that's like making absolutes saying concerts are appropriate for children. Comedy shows aren't appropriate for children. All things are different, right? I'm telling you, there's a lot of family-friendly drag shows out there. And there's a lot of family-unfriendly drag shows, like all of mine. So, like, one movie is explicit, so all movies are bad. Like, what is that? I personally do an adult act, and I would rather perform for all adults. And I don't advertise the show as for children. But I'm not going to, like, kick out a child. So, whatever, whatever happens, happens. I'm not your mom. Drag Might surprise you, I'm not your Men mom. dressed as very provocative, very very sexually explicit women. Men dressed as provocative, sexually explicit like women. Dancing. I will say, they could be reading us a little harder. Every time they talk about drag, they're like, it's these men dressed as beautiful, full breasts, full hips, tight little waist, long hair, and wet. They, I, I, I want them to be like, these imposters, these like, but they keep being like, honestly, they were serving. I'm going to say this too, from this video to the last video, this lighting is amazing. They have really pulled together the lighting and the, the, the audio. Like this, it looks, they look great. They do look great. Fake breasts that are way oversized, massive rears, you know, like wear very skimpy clothing and dance around and twerk and do all this stuff. Like, what is their issue with big boobs and big butts? You know what? Eve was the first woman. I bet she was stacked, bitch. You know, share a biblical worldview. Get back to God's design because he is a good creator. And one of the ways we do that is over on Patreon. So we have- Oh my video. God. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did you hear like, the absolute. She said, we need to worry about our children. We need to get back to God's design. And if you're interested in that, we have a Patreon. Do you see what I mean? It's asking the moral questions, basically saying, do you think you're a good person? Well, if you want to be a good person, here's how much it costs. Our way of saying thank you is by giving you free resources like five strategies to find freedom from sexual five sin. strategies to find freedom from sexual free, sin girldefined.com this is like not funny and this is not comedy but when i watch these which i've only seen a couple i just start to feel like these people really believe this these people really believe this and that's really wild to me and so someone came out and said anyone who thinks drag isn't for children is wrong Drag is expression, and children are such judgment-free beings, they don't really care what you're wearing, just what you're performing. Okay, oh, really? I mean, I don't disagree here. This person says drag is for children. I would say, to us again, to assert that the entire art form of drag, every drag performer is for children, is wrong. And that's why things like this get so heated, because everybody wants to talk in abs- like absolutes. There is drag shows for children. They-, they exist. Now, if your fundamental issue that you're offended by at a drag show is that you saw a man in a wig, that's not enough for me. If you saw a man in a wig, like with a crucifix chugging blood, and that could be an issue. But if you're saying base level, like a man in a dress is is offensive to me, I'm really not on your side at all. There's drag performers out there that even me at 15 years of drag, there's drag performers out there that I don't prefer to watch because they gross me out. God damn. Exposing them to sex. Do you guys get the sense that these women hate each other? <laughs> I know that's horrible to say, but when one of them is talking, the other one is looking at her like, are you done? Like they really, you know, and I, I'm working with Katya. I know what that looks like. You know, she drives home in her Pinto and she's like Amber, whatever, what are their names? Renee, Kristen and Bethany. And what the do you want? Yeah, no, it's okay. Come get it. You know what you did. Do you love God? Hello, I love God. God, are you there? It's Margo. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, I got interrupted by that man. See, like that offended me. 
No kid should have to see what I just saw. Dressed up like women, now praying on these young okay. children. Okay, no she didn't. She just said praying on these young children. You guys, I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna tell you something very fundamental. Nobody who does drag thinks about kids. We don't get in drag thinking, I hope the kids in the audience like it. I hope the kids really turn up for me today. I hope the kids brought their tipping money. The whole thing of gay people and children and like the grooming, like like wanting to children is like crazy. I think we all know where men put on dresses and kids. Okay, it's not a drag show. I never was at a drag show until I was 18. Do you think that going to a drag show makes you do drag? Even taking young boys and dressing them up like over sexualized yeah. women. Um, that is not over sexualization. These are like the people that like when there's they, somebody has like a kid and it's like a little boy and their baby, like, ooh, that's her that's his girlfriend. That's his girlfriend. He's a heartbreaker. I'm like, you're disgusting. We have a designer. We, we have, have a designer a God who loves us. We have a God who cares about us. From the beginning of time, he was extremely oh my God. intentional. This is really wild, you guys. I know we're supposed to be doing comedy videos, but people are really wild. It, I feel like, I mean, I'm sitting here looking like this, being like, wow, some people are crazy. And maybe I'm flawed. Maybe I have worms in my brain. I would be so much more afraid of what would happen to my kid if they went to church. Way more afraid, way more afraid. Do people go to therapy because they went to a drag show? <laughs> no. I just think it takes common sense to look at and go, wow, this is a disaster. No wonder we are having so many mental problems in our own backyard you guys i just i just don't understand like what are you afraid of like are what's gonna what is going to happen if you are eating a taco and some french fries having a margarita and a person in a wig walks by pretending to sing if your faith is like that's all it takes like whew, i saw somebody lip syncing with a puppet and now i'm not a christian anymore like i don't know i really don't know I really don't know. I really don't know. In Genesis 1 and 2, we see Genesis. God Genesis 1 and 2. I know that queen. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to stage. Genesis. <laughs> but in society, we're told, you know, men can be women, women can be men, anyone can be anything, mm -hmm. really. And it does get so confusing. And this is the other thing, you guys. I, I, I think that these people are having some cloudiness, and they're probably gonna watch this, whatever. I think you're having some cloudiness about drag and people who do drag wanting to become the other sex or another gender. That's not the case. Most of the time, most of the time, like, I mean, people don't always do this because they like are trying to slowly quit the gen the the expression they're born. Like, I don't, that's not true. When we're in the womb, the, the Bible says that God- This is so much more intense than the last video. The last video was like talking about blush. This video is like, it's a part of God's holistic plan for who we are and I can look at my body and see I'm a female. This is the thing, lady. To say that everybody who dresses in drag hates the body they're born in, doesn't want to be that, like, that's all so wild. And it's also interesting, I always bring it back to this, but it's funny that, like, when it's Tyler Perry doing Medea or, like, you know, Dana Carvey doing Church Lady, anything like that, it's, it's not drag and it's fine. But when it's, like, in a queer space, like, there's a DJ involved in a disco ball and it's gay people watching, suddenly it's like trauma. We must all be traumatized. The whole the whole big push for drag queens to be mainstream, the confusion. There's not a, this is also the thing. They keep talking about how drag is being pushed to be mainstream. This is what's happening. Drag queens are doing drag. People say, I wanna see that. I'm gonna go to that show. I'm gonna buy a ticket. I'm gonna download the record. I'm gonna watch the TV show. People are allowing themselves to be interested in this without it meaning anything deeper than you just watch someone's art form, someone's creative work. So they keep talking about how like drag's being pushed in the mainstream. It's like, Mary, unless I fly into your house and drag and take your, your dead arm while you're sleeping and make you click download like one of my albums or something, nobody's pushing you to do anything. People are willfully enjoying this because they don't care what people like this have to say about it. <laughs> this is what's funny. It's sort of like when you hear like the gay agenda and as a gay person, you're like, is there some massive, is there a PowerPoint that nobody has forwarded me? Is there a PDF? Because there's not more to it. Like the gay, like drag queens don't have an agenda. We're not trying to make people do drag. Ask an established drag queen if she wants more drag queens to exist. That is, no, we don't want anybody to do drag. We don't want people to do drag. We, we don't care if people do drag. We don't care if people like go home and cross dress. Like that has nothing to do with why we do drag. And that's why it's so bizarre and confusing. People like this always think there's some master plan. It's like, 
To me as a drag queen, more, it's always been more expression than a political statement. I'm doing this character for fun. And of course, as a fun side bonus, it's a political statement, but most drag queens, I'm gonna tell you something. People get on drag race and stuff and they're like, I always wanted to do drag. I always wanted to like, like challenge norms. Most drag queens start out for attention because they're bored and they want to get drunk with their friends. It's not like a master plan. He cares for you. He made you. He knew you when you were like a tiny little baby and he has a good plan for your life. They're saying that we God knew you when you were a little baby. Actually <laughs> unpack this in much greater yes. detail Hi, on Dad. the Girl Defined show. So our podcast, we share a whole testimony of a man who was yes. a drag queen. He shares his conversion <gasps> to Christ and just the amazing, amazing oh, transformation no. of God. It sounds like they the talked inside. to somebody who used to do drag and then converted to Christ. <sighs> It's really, really damaging when stuff like that happens because I don't know, it's sort of like if you're like a gay Trump person and then they go, look, this person's gay and they like Trump. If you're like, look, this person was a drag queen and now it's like, it's very damaging, very damaging. Let's speak truth in love. There is freedom when we follow God's design. Okay. <sighs> this one was actually, uh, not worth making fun of in a way. I mean, it was just like a little, it's a little more sad. It's just, it's a little sad. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, you guys. I really don't know. But I guess my final thought is these gals seem to believe that drag, like as an industry, as an art form, as a thing that exists, that it, there's some sort of like nefarious plot to it. I mean, at drag shows, our main plot is trying to get these cross dressers on stage on time and hope they don't hand us a CD that skips. That's the main plan. So I feel like these women give us more credit than we're, we, we deserve, cause like, we're just doing drag. I mean, I'm telling you, I don't know if this will get found by the Christians, but we're just doing drag. It's just dressing up. It's not, e when you think about it, it's not even that interesting. I mean, it's a costume. It's a costume. When you dress as a pirate for Halloween, does it mean that, I, is it because you hate yourself and you wanna be a pirate? Like, no, it's just dressing up. Well, I don't know. It's it's just, it was, it was a little, it was a little dark. It was a little dark. Okay, bye. Our own backyard. Not